Have you ever struggled to try and get your group together to play a tabletop RPG? Schedules clash, you can't get a venue, and nobody wants the GM. Well, that is why I have built this device. A fully integrated AI-powered Game Master Cyberdeck for running the classic tabletop RPG Cyberpunk 2020. In today's video, I will cover how I designed and constructed this one-of-a-kind device, and how you can replicate this setup yourself using the files and instructions that I'll provide, making it super easy to get yourself immersed into the gritty, neon-drenched cyberpunk world. So, are you ready? Oh, this is gonna be a good one. Let's begin. Despite my friends not being interested in playing it, I still went out and bought everything for it. The books, dice, you name it. I just loved its retro cyberpunk aesthetic. The way the game books just pulled you into Night City. The characters, the equipment, oh, it is so my bag. Over nearly a decade, my fascination with the game completely remained in orbit. The video game adaptation Cyberpunk 2077 released during that time only fueled my desire to dig deep into the classic content. Knowing how unbelievably off rails and crazy a tabletop RPG can be in comparison to the open world experiences of video games. And in these last few years, finally, my interest in coding and AI has made it possible for me to actually start playing this game for real. My mission was clear build a semi-portable, fully autonomous device that acts as a game master powered entirely by AI. I've kind of got three options. I could either run the AI locally, which means that I have to have a really strong computer running on a GPU using probably Llama or something to that effect. My next option would be to have a custom GPT. Now I don't want to have a laptop or my phone with me. I really don't want this to be a phone app or for it to be browser based because that would just be distracting. Option three is to run the entire application through OpenAI's API. That is effectively a link from my app straight into the OpenAI servers, and this was the best solution. First, I sourced hardware. I repurposed a 50 pound gigabyte Nook mini PC from eBay, loaded with lightweight Linux and Ubuntu for speed and suitability. I then attached this mic, these small speakers that are surprisingly good, and for something a little different, this square 720x720 720 720 screen which I had to order twice after getting a bit heavy handed attaching it to the console housing. Ouch. Next, I tackled the software. With Python as my backbone, I set out to craft an intuitive audio only interface powered by OpenAI's API. The AI handles complex game states, character creation, combat management, and intricate NPC interactions. I also added into the code the extensive list of the models available. Each model has its price and capabilities laid out, and after testing, I landed on the 4.0 Mini. It balanced cost and performance brilliantly. It's about $3 per two hour session, cheaper than your average pint of beer down the bloody pub. Now remember, if you know me on this channel, you know that I do not count myself as a coding engineer. I am a coding mechanic. I prefer module in and module out. And that's how I, with the help of AI, built this code. I initially began by giving ChatGPT, Claude AI and Google's Gemini the same brief. I compared the results and Claude consistently nailed the coding side. It was concise, clean and with excellent comments. The classes cover the core game state where saving, loading and logging of the JSON files take place, meaning the AI always knows where you are and what you've done and how close you are to getting flatlined. Then we have the speech handler. This inputs what comes back to the AI and outputs to the spoken word using OpenAI's TTS-1 text-to-speech model. The model has 11 voices. My personal preference is Onyx. He sounds like a bit of a dude and I love the way he he says Cyberdeck 2020. Welcome to Cyberdeck 2020. Let's create your character for a thrilling run in Night City. It's so rad. 
For the graphics, I headed over to Midjourney to create scenes akin to the game's original artwork, then over to Photoshop to crop and make them black and white. These pictures became the animated background, which was a looping GIF slideshow with a kind of glitchy viewfinder vibe. I then used Pygame to display everything and MoviePie for the slideshow. The best part is that the input and output is entirely voice controlled. No need for a mouse, no need for a keyboard. You could take this thing camping with you if you had a good camping battery, which I actually have. Uh, but it's still a little bit cold in the UK to camp at the moment. Blah, 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 blah. Now we move over to the 3D printing of the case, and it's time to open up Fusion 360, which I used to build the Neurophotonic R5 Flow Cyberdeck, one of my last videos that I absolutely love doing. If you haven't seen it yet, watch it. It was a brilliant project. I'm so chuffed with it. But my God, did I learn a lot from the 3D printing. And I took all of those lessons into this process. Sketching is where it's at. It's the difference between a bad build and a great one. And like anything, it just takes practice, practice, practice. Exact dimensions with sanding are more desirable than giving a few millimeters in the design because you'll just end up with nothing fitting. I wanted this console to have the classic green of the cyberware with the synonymous black and sick blood red material for the screen housing and the speaker lid. I went for this transparent cherry red PLA that just looks gorgeous on the print bed, especially with the honeycomb infill. After compulsory sanding and adding these cool little aesthetics, the deck was complete. A retro cyberpunk housing inspired by cyberdecks featured in the game art and the gritty aesthetics of Night City itself. It's a sturdy, stylish, neon accented cyberdeck, my new personal GM. I play with it just as I would with a game master or a referee at the table. I still populate my character sheets, figure out strategy, take notes, and most importantly, roll dice. In my game shown here, I play as Lord Lando Greyraven, a striking figure even among Night City's elite. Lord, Lord Greyraven Grey is a 65-year-old former corporate magnate turned schemer in exile. Draped in retro chic shoulder padded suits and leaning ever so slightly on a black onyx cane crowned with a crystal skull, he cuts a silhouette that's as commanding as it is enigmatic. Grey Raven was born in the corporate zone and raised by powerful benefactors, a child of the system who rose through its ranks until betrayal knocked him from the throne. His father's company was ripped away by a treacherous boardroom coup led by his lifelong enemy, Roldark Thane. Now, Grey Raven haunts the high-rise haunts of the power-hungry, gathering allies in chrome-lit lounges and manipulating stock portfolios with as much finesse as he seduces boardroom allies. Your nemesis has been spotted more frequently around corporate events, seeming to bolster his grip on the company you claim as your birthright. Word is that he's expanding his influence by ingratiating himself with influential figures who could aid in thwarting your plans to reclaim your family's legacy. As you prepare to roll for your stock market check, the atmosphere around you heightens with the buzz of corporate intrigue and guarded conversations. With your keen awareness and the knowledge gained from years of experience, you're aiming to assess the financial landscape for opportunities or leverage while interacting with Tessa Wu. Stock market check. Skill, stock market, eight, roll, 1d10 plus intelligence, five plus skill, Please roll a 1d10 and let me know the result. Oh, it's an eight. I got an eight. At the table, he isn't just a character. I am Lord Grey Raven, weaving power plays, seduction and intimidation into each decision. This isn't just a game. It's a war for legacy. And the beauty of this app? It just needs the Python 3 environment installed. It's super flexible. Still very much in beta testing due to its size. It's not perfect, but I love that. And honestly, it could evolve into something way bigger. So whether you want to build on it or jump straight into Night City, I have got you covered. All you need is your own ChatGPT API key and you're good to go. This Cyberpunk AI GM is live and available for download right now on my itch.io page alongside previous YouTube projects and digital editions of my original Cyberpunk tabletop games, Civitas Nihilium and Civitas 2230. You'll also find my metaphysical text adventure for Windows PC, The Mysteries of Profundum. And even more exciting, I'm introducing our new membership initiative. For the price of a cup of coffee, you can support the channel and gain exclusive access to loads of wicked perks. 
every purchase or donation directly supports the channel, helping me create even more engaging content and launch a regular monthly live stream. These streams will feature gameplay sessions, deep dives into cyberpunk and tech, general catch-ups and much more. Plus, get ready for my upcoming video series, Cyberpunk Flicks Deconstructed, a new project dedicated to reviewing films and content firmly rooted in the cyberpunk genre. 80% of you said it was a good idea, so I'm going for it. There is plenty of content lined up, so make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't to yet, and tickle that bell button so you get regular notifications of when I've posted a video or when I go live. <laughs> so let me know in the comments if I'm inspiring you to build anything. I would love to feature your projects on future videos. Please do it. It's going to be sick. Until next time, keep your neural interfaces hot and your cyberware clean. Now go build something. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> love it. Cool. Cheers. Warning, band, location, override, talent, series system, compromised. <laughs>